She wasn't maliciously saying your skin is so and so. You're just blending. You just blend in here. But I think maybe there was some what we call white passing that I had some sort of advantage because maybe I look what a Caucasian person is at the certain privilege. And I don't want to get into that because I don't like to buy into that theory, but there is that really is out there, right? There is a certain degree yeah. of white privilege out there. And maybe I got that white passing a little bit indirectly because of the vitiligo. And did, I question, I leave it open-ended, did that help me at all? And the answer to that is, I don't know. I don't know. But mm -hmm. there's a lot to my journey with vitiligo. And I will say now in my 40s, I'm not afraid to talk about it anymore. I'm not really self-conscious. The only problem with vitiligo, which I wish we could fix, and maybe you and your magical derm worlds and my brother, the sun toxicity with it. It's awful. It's awful. So summers are tough, and I want to be outside playing, but the sun is so toxic to my skin. It burns within seconds, it feels like. And my wife's really understanding, and sometimes I get a little pouty. And like, I don't want to wear sunscreen just for going out for 10 minutes. Put it on. It's just the disease process. It is what it is. So... Thank you for letting me share all that. It makes me feel vulnerable, but I feel like it's a story that needs to be shared. And I never thought I would write a book, first of all, and I never thought I'd be talking about vitiligo in my books.